Hello and welcome to the main cave. Now in today's video I've got a portable monitor that I use with my Steam Deck and I'm going to go through things like the unboxing, features and is it worth the price that I paid and who I think this would suit. So all chapters are linked to in the description if you want to flip to the part that you're most interested in. Firstly, I bought this off Amazon a couple of months ago, and if you've ever looked for an external monitor on Amazon, you'll be presented with pages of the same looking, same sounding spec monitors. The main theme across them all is light, 15.6 inches, 1080 with HDR, and they all seem pretty cheap. You can get a recognized brand, but then you'd be looking at doubling, if not tripling your price. So why did I pick this one? Well, all monitors I checked out had different names and similar specs, so there were four main reasons I chose this particular model. Firstly was the price, that was in the middle range of about £150, but it was actually £170 but with a £20 off at the time. Secondly, the response rate was an excellent one millisecond. Thirdly, it had an extra port on the side, albeit a micro USB, but not many had this and I thought uh, as an extra I'd like to have it even if I didn't use it. And finally, I wanted one with a protective case and a stand. Many come with this or a kickstand that flips out the back, but I wanted one that covers the front screen entirely for when I put it in my bag. And with that in mind, I chose this one, the Keister. And I I'll link to it in the description below. Here is the exact specification of this particular model. It is a 15.6 inch 1080p 16.9 screen, a contrast ratio of 1000 to 1, 60 hertz refresh mode, one millisecond response time with built in speakers. So from the listing, it all sounds great. It does have a couple of issues though, which I will touch on later, but spoiler alert, for the price that I paid, this is an excellent buy. As I will touch on later, you can get a higher refresh rate or resolution, but if price is a factor and if you don't need anything more than what's on this, then the 1080 60 hertz is ideal. So the unboxing is an unceremonious affair with it coming sellotaped in a nondescript white box with a stock image on the front that barely resembles what's inside. On the rear is some information about it such as screen size, brightness, contrast ratio and the likes and not really much else. Inside is well packaged with foam inserts, the screen itself sits in the middle and underneath you get a very welcome array of cables. You get supplied an HDMI to mini HDMI, USB A to USB C, a good quality USB C to USB C and a power supply socket. The manual is a small pamphlet which I was disappointed that doesn't quite tally up with the screen that I have with indications of ports not the same as what I have on the actual screen. Nevertheless it's pretty simple to work out so the manual got binned almost immediately immediately. What struck me first when I got, first got out of the packaging was how light it is. At 1.5 kilograms, you don't really appreciate how light it is until you're holding it in your hand. It is quite a substantially sized screen in dimensions, but it feels fantastic. On the left side of the screen is two USB-C and a mini HDMI. The top USB is labeled SS, which stands for super speeds, and that is what I'll be using to plug my Steam Deck into. Below that is one labelled DC in, which I use to power my Steam Deck. Although later in the video, I'll show you that this isn't always needed. The mini HDMI is exactly what it says. Takes HDMI source if that's what you need. On the right side is a power and a source button. Select that for changing your source between USB-C 1 and 2 and the HDMI. Above that is the indicator light and then the rocker. One press of this gets you into the menu to change all the settings or just rock it up and down for the volume. Next is the micro USB port and finally above that is a 3.5mm audio port for plugging in speakers or headphones. As mentioned before, this whole screen is protected by this cover flap which wraps its way around. It does a very good job of stopping knocks, bumps and scratches etc, but it's not solid enough to prevent it damage from being dropped. It's actually made from like a faux leather material, but it actually gives it quite a premium feel. It folds out to become a stand which works well enough with two possible viewing angles. It's attached to the screen via magnets and it's here that it's let down a little bit. The magnets aren't very strong, in fact if they were they would probably affect the screen, but there isn't a huge clamping force on it. This is fine in practical uses as it never really comes off, but if you were to pull it, it wouldn't take much force for it to be separated. So I chose the black bordered screen, but it also comes in silver if that's what you need. The black border has the logo emblazoned on the front. I'm not a huge fan of doing this, but I think it ruins the look of a sleek monitor, but I completely understand why they do this. This is their product at the end of the day, and they want you to know who brands it. The bezel around the top and the sides is five millimeters, and the bottom bezel is only 15 millimeters. It's five millimeters thick at the top, with this increasing about three quarters of the way down, where the ports are to be 10 millimeters. The back panel is a brushed aluminium fill with two clusters for cutouts of the speakers and I'll talk about them later. I'll be mainly talking about my Steam Deck in this video, but it doesn't have to be that that you plug in. It supports plenty, but the general rule is if whatever you have outputs to DisplayPort or HDMI, 
then you can connect it. Consoles, laptops, phones, your choice. As I said earlier, I plugged my Steam Deck into the top USB-C port. The first time I plugged it in, when I fired it up and mirrored the Steam Deck screen, what I was pleased was it didn't need power. It took the power from the Steam Deck. Now you may think this would adversely affect the battery, and although it does drain it a little bit more, it doesn't drain it significantly for it to become a problem. But if you did want to keep playing for hours, then the USB-C port below it will sort you out. Just plug in a power cable, or if you're traveling, a power bank, and you can charge up your Steam Deck and use the screen at the same time. If you want to use this for other consoles, then you will need to power the monitor, as they are much more resource heavy. The only thing I wouldn't plug into this is a Switch, I've already bricked a switch last year and plugging it into something that wasn't official dock. So if you are going to do that, just be careful. Take it from me, I've made a very expensive mistake. So imagine if you are out on your travels, you want to travel with as little as possible. So you pack in your Steam Deck. In there, you only need your monitor as well as you don't need anything else. Pack your power bank and you have hours of gaming without needing a wall socket. I did use the HDMI to test it and it worked as expected but I just use the USB-C port for convenience. Speaking of convenience, you can obviously connect a wireless keyboard and mouse to the Steam Deck to run into, but if you did need a wired mouse and keyboard, there are two ways you can achieve this. One is to plug in your USB-C hub into the Steam Deck and have this monitor output via HDMI and plug in the keyboard and mouse into your hub. For power, you will need to plug in a power cable into the monitor to drive it, and you need power to the Steam Deck, which is another cable into the power delivery port of your hub, all of which is just too much hassle. So onto the second option. Now remember earlier I said that there was a micro USB slot on the right side of the screen? Well I went out and bought an eight pound micro USB hub and that works fine, no power needed. Just plug in the hub, plug in your keyboard and mouse and it works a much better solution. But of course that is if you need the keyboard and mouse to be wired. If you don't need it to be wired and then it's just so much easier to use a wireless Bluetooth keyboard and mouse. On top of buying the screen I also bought another USB-C type cable. This one has a 90 degree end as most of the time I use this screen I have the Steam Deck laying flat direct in front of it and it just makes sense to have a cable running along the top rather than sticking straight out. It's a, just a neat solution. The screen is a shiny gloss and it is a bit of a fingerprint magnet, especially with these minimum bezels. It's always an idea to keep a cloth nearby as I seem to be constantly cleaning it. So how does the screen perform? Well, pretty well. I've been playing with it for several hours on and off over the past couple of weeks and I've come to really enjoy when out and about, going out of my way to pack it on trips and test when I can. If you want to change it, it's in the settings of where you can tweak it. You have your usual brightness, contrast, etc. But I haven't really felt the need to change anything as I was surprised at how good it looked straight out of the box. In the example here, please do bear in mind that this may look different to what you see with the naked eye. This picture is going through my camera, through my PC, then through YouTube. So it may not be 100% accurate, but I hope the quality shines through as it really is an excellent screen. Sat in front of it, it's bright, pin sharp, and very colorful. As for response, it says one milliseconds and I believe them. I don't have the technical equipment to measure exactly if I'm honest, but I'm not sure I'd notice the difference between anything under probably five milliseconds. It feels snappy with no obvious delay. So the specification of one milliseconds is probably about right. If you look, the monitor is hitting 60 FPS and with the right adjustments in game, it will stick to this. But depending on the game, you will need to push the Steam Deck up to the screen's capacity of 1080, and it runs very well. I tried several games from the main cave Steam library, and I managed to get 1080 out of all that needed it. The Steam Deck defaults to 720 on 16.9 monitors, so to get the full resolution out of it, you will need to go into each game and set it to 1080. This is done on a game per game basis. The monitor also works expected for desktop mode. Just go into the displays and changing your resolution to what you require and whether you want to use an extended or mirror display. I personally only use a desktop mode for transferring emulation files, but as you can see, it working well for anyone who uses desktop mode more than me. As I mentioned earlier, there are two speakers around the back. They do a great job of pumping out stereo sound, but they don't go very loud. If you do want loudness, then you will need to plug in some speakers or some headphones into the jack. Now here is a sound test. So I'm sat around 50 centimeters or so from the screen. I think you'll agree for speakers, they're no more than 10 millimeters deep. They produce a decent sound. Other monitors I've seen have speakers coming out the side, which may sound better, but at the sacrifice of a thicker screen. So these ones do a good enough job. So who is this for? 
Well, I would happily use this at home instead of using my 24 inch monitor. The beauty of being able to just use it without power is a massive plus. On the other hand, I've taken this screen out and about more often than not, sometimes just setting up in the car or a cafe, albeit the former being a bit cumbersome, and I've enjoyed the extra screen real estate without having to take too much extra on my travels. If I had the spare cash, I'd like to go for a higher hertz screen, but for use with the Steam Deck on a daily basis, it's perfectly manageable. You can plug many things into this, so if you need a second monitor for another project, then you will find this very useful for relatively little money. It has a bunch of possible uses and traveling with the Steam Deck is one such use. Okay, if you have any questions, do let me know down in the comments below. Are you thinking about picking one up? Are you gonna be using one with the Steam Deck or any other project? Do let me know down in the comments below. Thanks for watching and until the next video, bye-bye.